Yo, welcome back to the channel. So if you've been following what I've been up to this year, you will have noticed that I've been getting into naked cinematic cameras and I've designed a naked Blackmagic 4K, a naked Blackmagic 6K that converts it to a Sony E-mount to make it even lighter. And I've released the Halo RC Horus frame, which is my seven inch frame designed to carry both those cameras uh, in the best way possible. And today I'm announcing the release of my new camera, the Naked Zcam M4. So after designing the Naked Blackmagic 4K and 6K cameras and the perfect frame to carry them, uh, I was talking to a few people and trying to figure out what would be a good camera to do next to reduce the weight and grip and make naked. And we soon decided on one of these. This is a Zcam E2 M4. This camera is quite similar to a Blackmagic 4K in that it uses a 4K M4, a micro four third sensor and MFT lenses. It shoots 4K DCI in ProRes and just like the Blackmagic 4K, but the one thing that this does that the Blackmagic doesn't is that this can shoot uh, 120 FPS uh, in 4K DCI using the entire sensor. Now the Blackmagic can shoot in higher frame rates, but what it does is crop the sensor, so it only uses a small portion of the sensor, whereas the Zcam is able to shoot 120 FPS using the entire sensor. As you can see, the Zcam E2 M4 is already a pretty good form factor for drones, uh, unlike the Blackmagic. So I took this 950 gram camera and turned it into this 450 gram camera. And the benefits of using the same style of mounting as the Blackmagic 4K is that we have this built-in adjustable sensor mount so you can adjust the camera angle and there's all this space on the back for mounting your lipos to it uses the same alpha gel mounting points as the blackmagic 4k so this will fit on any setup designed for carrying naked black magics so there's obviously my frame the halo rc horus and all the other frames that have been designed specifically for naked cinematic cameras as we're making it lighter and running it on, and you can run it on these high powered seven inch frames like the Horus, uh, you can film very high speed stuff like drifting and race cars, motorbikes, stuff like that. So it made sense to do a high fr higher frame rate camera. So I'll show you a few, a few clips now, but it's by no means showing off the full potential of this camera and I was still learning how to use it like it's really quite different for setting exposure when you're running at 120 fps when you're used to running 30 fps I've had to relearn what ND filters I should use and things like that so yeah exposure and things like that are not going to be great in the footage but um, at least it can kind of show you what it can do so we'll take a look at the footage at uh, some footage now then uh, I'll take you over to the bench and give you a closer look at the Naked Zcam M4.
Okay, so taking a look at the Naked Z Cam M4 on the bench here, you can see that it's done in the same style as the Naked Black Magics with two main carbon plates that house the PCB of the camera. Uh, unlike the Black Magic, which is just one PCB, the Naked Z Cam actually uses three PCBs. These two at the front are joined together by connectors, and the one at the back there that's power and IO connectivity uh, is just connected to those boards by a couple of cables. On the top here you can see the carbon sensor housing case uh, with the MFT sensor mount on the front. That's being supported by these front mounted struts uh, that allow you to adjust the angle of the camera depending on what you're filming. So you can go from minus 20 degrees all the way up to plus 50 degrees. So depending on how fast you're flying or what you're filming, you can adjust your camera angle to suit. On the top deck here, just like my Black Magic, Naked Black Magics, uh, there's lots of options for mounting batteries. So you can just run one big battery in the middle like I've got it set up for here or you can put four straps on and run two packs, or you can even run one pack in a toilet tank style across the back for when you get the camera angle all the way back. At the back here is the IO and power. Uh, so you have an XD30 there for putting up to 4S of power into this. You have a USB-C for doing firmware updates and for connecting uh, iPhone for viewing the feed and changing your settings. Ethernet is there, but obviously I'm not expecting anybody to use it. It's just, I couldn't get rid of it, so it's just there. <laughs> There's a switch at the back here for turning the power on and off. And this little antenna, you might be wondering, why is there an antenna on the back? Well, the, the Zcam actually has Wi-Fi built into it. So this is a little Wi-Fi antenna that you can use to connect either iPhone or Android over Wi-Fi and view the live feed and adjust all the settings. And then we have the HDMI out connector on the top there for plugging in your monitor and viewing the feed there also. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to connect a screen to view the feed and to change your settings and an easy way to plug in and switch it on and off. I've also created this control board that slots in behind the camera mount there. It gives you an easy to access record button and you can also enter the menu system and you've got your controls there for navigating the menu system. Probably easier to just show you on this. So you can see here you've got a record button and menu on one side. I've also tapped out the pins for the record button so that you could connect a real pit and do remote start stop of the record. Then on the other side here you've got uh, the menu controls so going up and down through the menu, function button and OK. So this just emulates the top buttons from the from the Zcam and the menu system that normally would appear on the little screen on the top of the Zcam is actually emulated on the HDMI out I'll show you that shortly so when you're viewing your feed over HDMI you can enter the menu system and the little menu pop up in the corner and you can go through and adjust your settings that way so you don't actually even need a phone to control the camera at all. You can just use a HDMI monitor and this little control board. So one of the things I personally like about the Zcam M4 coming from the Naked Blackmagic 4K is that it uses the same MFT size sensor and MFT lenses. So you can use the same lens as you would use on your Naked Blackmagic 4K. Uh, and yeah, the optimal one is this Leowa 7.5 millimeter. So I'm just going to pop this lens on so that I can show you uh, all the different ways you can connect to it, uh, connect to the camera and view the feed. As I said earlier, you can run it on up to 4S. Uh, 
but it also runs on 2S. Uh, I've been using these little 450 milliamp hour 2S batteries for powering my Naked Black Magics, and they can, I can usually get two full flights out of one of these packs, uh, but the Naked Z Cam, definitely a bit more power hungry, and you're gonna eat through one of these easily in about six minutes. So you can you can just about get away with, well, I'd say about 10 minutes probably, maybe eight to 10 minutes. So a six minute flight will just about kill the battery. Uh, but obviously it's just about enough and you wanna minimize the weight. So I like using these, but you could put a Beck on the, you could put a 12 volt Beck on your, drone and just send an xt30 up to plug into there so obviously you can also power it off the balance lead or something like that loads of different ways you could power this thing so the xt30 just slots in the back there and you turn it on by flicking the switch up there's several lights on this it might be a bit hard to see on here there's a little light underneath there and there's another light here you can see that it's flashing red because I haven't got a CFast card plugged into it. Uh, while I'm on that, CFast cards plug into the front just like the Naked Black Magic. And yeah, there's a light there. This, you can see lights through the top of it as well. So there's lots of ways it tells you how it, that it's working. So I go ahead and plug this HDMI monitor in and turn that on. Okay, so obviously brings up the feed there. You've got all your status text and uh, histogram and everything you can, these are all adjustable within the settings. So yeah, by using the control board, I can enter the menu system. So it brings that up in the top right there. And then I can just use the controls on the right hand side to go up and down through all the settings. And you can go in there to like turn on Wi-Fi and uh, do all the setup stuff that you might need to do. So that's one of the easiest ways to just uh, view your feed and change the settings. If you're running an iPhone, I am actually an Android user, so I'm very lucky that my friend Andy gave me this to use. Uh, Zcam is quite well known for having a really, really good app um, for controlling the camera. You can use a USB-C to Thunderbolt cable. And simply plug your iPhone in. And you'll get the feed up on the screen there. Sorry, it's a bit dark. Uh, I don't know how to use an iPhone if I'm honest, but you can obviously you can do settings and things within here, maybe give you a bit of a better view. So you can see there I've got focus peeking on and you can turn on false colour and obviously you can adjust all the settings within the phone. Um, you can actually format the SD cards and you can, you can live, yeah, uh, there, ha there isn't a setting I haven't found in the phone uh, that isn't in the main menu system. So if you're an iPhone user, you can, you can plug in over USB-C and connect uh, and can do all the controls that way. So yeah, iPhone users can, can just plug in over USB-C, but Android, you're going to have to use the Wi-Fi. So... If I just go into my Wi-Fi settings here, you can see the Z cam pops up. So I connect to the Z cam's Wi-Fi and then you can hit this live control and now you've got a, wi uh, a live, now you've got this live, wire, totally wireless feed and you can do all the same stuff as you could, would on the uh, iPhone. So you could turn on false color and adjust all your settings, do everything you need. So you get all your menu system up on the side here, which is pretty cool. Um, there are some other little, it tells you the uh, the temperature of the camera. You can see here, because I've just got it sat on the side and it's been running for about 10 or 15 minutes now, just sat there, it's up to 51 degrees. But that's still not that bad, 
to be honest. Um, I'm not even sure when it thermally shuts off, but it's definitely higher than that. I think I've had it go up over 60 before and it's still started and stopped recording. So, okay, so that's a, that's about it. That is, that is all the functionality and how to use the Naked Z Cam. Okay, so there you have it. That was the Naked Z Cam M4. And just like the Naked Black Magics, I'm going to be offering three options. There's a kit where you can just buy the kit and build your own build guide coming soon. There's the option to send me your camera and I'll put it together and build it up and send it back to you. And obviously a third option where you can just buy the camera already built up, naked, ready to go, ready to film as I call it. Now, one of the good things about the Z cam is that there's no issue with firmware or whatever. So you could send me a brand new camera if you're struggling to find a secondhand one. But I highly recommend buying a secondhand one, preferably one where the case is all scratched up so you can save a bunch of money and you're going to be throwing away those parts anyway. They're not as uh, common as a Blackmagic, so they are a bit harder to find, especially in the UK anyway. I noticed in uh, the US they're a bit more popular. There shouldn't be any, any, any trouble getting hold of them. Uh, they are slightly more expensive than the uh, Blackmagic 4K and the kit itself is costing a bit more than the 4K. The price is going to be more like the 6K because there's so many more parts to it. I hope you like it and uh, yeah, stay tuned for the build guide and hopefully we're going to be seeing some uh, really cool drift footage from this camera in the near future. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Laters.